Hi, Clutter Fairy fans. Welcome to the Clutter Fairy Weekly for September 29th, 2020. I'm your co-host, Ed Gumnick, and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody. The Clutter Fairy Weekly is our uh, weekly webcast and podcast where we talk about all things organized. And we have been working on a series, and today is the last of the series. So we're excited that you're here for the end of our, of our series, and we are Looking forward to getting to it. If you're joining us in the Zoom meeting for the first time, you can share your comments and questions via the chat, and I'll try to make sure Gail gets to them before we move on to another topic. You can also use the raise hand feature to let us know that you'd like to ask a question or make a comment yourself via audio or video, and I will put you on. We're streaming the webcast live on Facebook, so you can also share your questions and comments there, and I'll relay them to Gail. And during the live webcast every week, you can talk to us directly by calling 669-900-6833. Use meeting ID 993-419-863 to join the meeting. Okay, let's get right to it. We are, as you said, wrapping up our series on developing a personal decluttering philosophy. We're calling this episode a decluttering philosophy, putting it all together. Okay, so in the first episode of this series, we introduced the idea that living the life that you love is about living authentically. That is living in a way that's true to your values and your principles, your beliefs, your aesthetics. Your stuff that occupies your space should be authentic too meaning it should be a genuine expression of who you are and what you love and what you value and what you want to be, have, or do. We spent the next three sessions exploring different aspects of our relationship to stuff. The last four weeks have been a sort of self-analysis. The goal has been to increase our awareness of our relationship to stuff and to get a clearer picture of the life that we want. And ultimately to be able to make sure that we what we have is in line with who we are and what we value. Today, we're going to bring all those things that we've talked about together in the series, bring them all together and look for practical approaches to reducing the clutter coming in and to deal effectively with the stuff that we already have. We're gonna talk again about the subject of algorithms. When we talk about algorithms, we're referring to simple rules of thumb. We can design for ourselves to streamline and clarify the decision-making process we apply to stuff. We're going to very briefly recap the ideas that we covered over the last four weeks, then suggest some sample algorithms that might grow out of the self-analysis that we've been encouraging you to engage in and hopefully give you some ideas about questions, tools, thought processes you can be having while you're dealing with your own stuff. So week one was about the life you love. The first area we covered was your idea of what a good life is your picture of the life you want to be living. We talked about reflecting on your values and the roles you fulfill, your goals and principles, your talents, as well as your tastes and preferences. So an algorithm to use while you're shopping in support of this concept might sound like this. Sure, I like it, but does it match the look I want in my house? Does it go with my decor or my favorite clothing look or my current style of dishes? Here's another one. Sure, I like it, but does this support the life I want to be living? If I want to spend more time crafting, how does another decorative item support that life goal? And an algorithm for decluttering what you already have might be, sure, these items are useful, but does this stuff I found in the cabinet have anything to do with the life I want to be living? Sure, these items have great memories, but am I saving more than I need to remember this person by? That one is specifically directed about keepsakes. All keepsakes have a great memory, but really I'm asking you is, uh, do you have to save all the keepsakes that have to do with any one person or can you filter them down? Week two was about uh, positive and negative emotions. In week two, we would encourage you to reflect on which emotions or drives are influencing your tendency to bring in too much, to keep too much, or to experience difficulty in letting go of things. So an algorithm to use while you're shopping might be, sure, I like it, but is this just because I like the atmosphere in the store or the lovely display or the cool signage suggesting that my life is incomplete without it? 
sure, I like it, but am I in the store right now to kill time or make myself feel better after a bad day or because I'm bored and looking for a thrill? And an algorithm you might use in the house while you're decluttering. Sure, this is a great outfit, but do I feel good when I wear it or do I feel uncomfortable? Sure, this is useful stuff I brought home from my last job, but other than memories, do these things have a benefit to me now in my home that makes keeping them worth it? Do I really want those things to be used now in my home? Week three was about habits and behaviors. In week three, we looked at habits that stand in opposition to our idea of a good life. We talked about trying to identify the unconscious things we do to degrade our environments. We suggested ways to cultivate small habits, daily practices, and new routines to support your dream of an organized space. So an algorithm to use while you're shopping might be, sure, I like to go in this store, but is there anything here that's on my current shopping list? Sure, that's a cool item in Amazon, but do I really need to buy it this second, or can I put it on a wish list? Sure, I like a bargain, but would I buy this stuff if it was regular price? That's an excellent one. Buying uh, Bargain shopping is always about bargains, and sometimes we buy it because it's a bargain, not because we would ever actually want the item. And certainly not because we need it. <laughs> <laughs> and certainly not because we need it, right. And so if you can ask yourself, would I have bought this at its full price? If the answer is no, then you already know that it's not really something that's important to you and you are just thrilled by it because it's cheap. And the fact that it's just cheap isn't good enough to keep it. An algorithm you might use in the house. Sure, I'd rather settle into the couch after I come home, but I need to support, I need to sort today's mail first before I run out of energy. Sure, I'd like to linger after breakfast, but I want the kitchen to be cleared up before I leave for work so it's clean when I come home. Week four was uh, the ethical and environmental questions topic. Last week, we talked about bringing ethical issues and environmental concerns into the decisions we make about what we bring into our lives and what to keep and what to let go. So an algorithm to use while you're shopping might be, sure, this item caught my eye, but am I comfortable about how buying this supports the makers of it? Sure, this is my favorite color, but is it made of good quality materials that are locally sourced? Sure, I want this now, but what's the useful life of this item? And what will become of it when I'm finished with it? And an algorithm you might use in the house. Sure, I want to send this item out of the house, but where can I donate it locally to good benefit to, other, to others? Sure, this thing still has some value, but might this have a greater value to someone else than it does to me? And does that make it easier to let it go? This is a very short list of ways you can think of it differently questions you can ask yourself that are more thoughtful and direct than your immediate knee-jerk response, which is, that's fabulous, I have to have it. Or, I love this thing and it has to stay in the house. <clears throat> you're trying to declutter your space and you're trying to not add more to your space. And so having a set of questions that allows you to Go beyond your initial attraction response. This is super cool when you're in a store. And to, to beyond your this is useful but question when you're at home or in, conversely also at home, you the first response is, oh, that reminds me of somebody. That is a keepsake from somebody. You can get past those initial responses and go on to ask a bunch of more questions, you can slow down what you're bringing in and you can filter the stuff that you are 
keeping in your house a little bit better. So does anybody have any questions they want to talk about today? Elkie on Facebook mentioned um, liking the atmosphere in the store, that the atmosphere of the store can be sort of a, a factor to overcome. Because it's always super fabulous and so much better than your own living room, right? Like that's the whole... <laughs> <laughs> Jan's 41 says yes, right? Yeah. And the, the whole thing about the store is they don't design the store to be your house. They design the store to be a collection of beautiful vignettes of all the clothing and how fabulous it looks together as a set and all of the tchotchkes and all the cookware at Wilming Sonoma. And, you know, it's like they design it to all be pretty in place. It's like a picture in a catalog and everybody loves how that looks you respond to how beautiful the part you know there's a the guy that's the window dresser and the guy that's the you know there's always somebody that whose job it is to make it appealing and make you find it interesting and appropriate to take home and you know this is the this is why you have to ignore the initial response go and enjoy the fact that you're walking around the store and it's beautiful and it smells good and it's all your favorite colors and it's fabulous but that is not your living room and that's not a good enough reason to take stuff home <laughs> i think that the um the people that uh it's what's it called um not bed bath bath and body works bath and body works convinces you to buy 47 bottles of bath wash, body wash in various scents because they're all thinking that it's like, it's, it all smells good and it's all pretty colors and it's all lovely arranged in, you know, pretty little decorative wall things, display units. And then you, you come out with $150 worth of body wash. Like what on earth? No one needs that much stuff. It's just the pretty that makes you buy it. And they put a lot of effort into making that happen. So that you'll want it. So yeah. This is the kind of stuff that you have to go. Yeah. Yeah. The store is pretty. La la la. Take off the rose colored glasses. Do I really need 27 bottles of body wash? No, I do not. Well, and I think the bargain, of, <laughs> I think of my experience with rooms to go and um, I don't want to be, I don't want to be too harsh, but, it was not a great experience and they, but they sort of, they sort of lure you in with attractive little arrangements and you know, you got, there's a couch and a chair and some end tables and some lamps and they make it, they arrange it. They stay they it. help you imagine how, how it would look for you, but they don't, they don't, then they don't, you know, they would sell you the entire room and it would be a small fortune, but they're just trying to trigger your imagination to say, if I just buy, if I just buy this thing here, it will, the, I will get this feeling at home. And that distracts you from the poor quality and the sort of, uh, they use what I consider a little bit deceptive pricing you know they'll get quote you they they have a label price a sticker price on the couch but then you have to add pay more to have it scotch guarded you know and it's like well why would i why would you sell me a, a couch made of that's covered in cloth that hasn't been scotch guarded you know and and ultimately i mean that's a specific example but it's that's the idea that they don't have your home layout like if you go in a store they have a big square and they can make the layout whatever they want any store can do it however they want and it has nothing to do with what your living room is shaped like and so there is no way to translate it 100 percent from what you're looking at in the store to how it's going to be in the house and you know, that's the same from big furniture. And it's also, think about how they, think about Ross and all the little decor displays and they lay them all out in a lovely little vignette for you to see. As you don't have a fireplace that all that's gonna sit on. Like <laughs> they have endless shelf space to lay all that stuff out and you do not. And so it doesn't always translate when you get it home. And I think that's why 
that's part of why shopping in stores is appealing because they can make it such a pleasant and relaxing and beautiful experience. And they do it because they want you to buy something and take it home. So, you know, go and enjoy the store and then ignore their enticement and go home empty handed. <laughs> Don't um, take Na home their beauty. Just enjoy the store. Nancy, who's with us in Zoom, said the minimal mom recently mentioned this one this is an a, a a question to ask yourself yes i like this or i can use it use this but can i live without it and that's a good question well and that's a great question particularly in the context of what we talked about last week the ethical the ethical questions the environmental questions can i live without it do i have an alternative do I have something else that will work instead? Yeah. Yeah. New and right and top of mind and right in your hand right this minute is easy and appealing, but you're still going to have to get it home and unpackage it and use it. And then it's going to be there with the 37 other things that would have accomplished the same thing. Yeah, that's a good one. Can I do without it? Yeah, you probably can. And you can save your money that way too. I've been thinking a lot as we've talked about today's topic about aesthetics and I think that when you're younger you're attracted to a lot of things a, a, a lot of you know bright colors and shiny objects <laughs> capture your attention and <laughs> right and you have more interests and as you as you get older and busier you have less time and less energy and you More narrow it you narrow it down you whittle it you whittle it down and i think that we develop a lot of habits in our younger years that don't serve us well later on mm -hmm. and so i think you know part of what we've been advocating for in this series is to encourage people to do some introspection and self-reflection and shedding right? and shedding like yeah shedding. shake shake off the stuff that well this was yeah this was cool once upon a time but it's really not it's not me anymore right i um, constantly go back to the thing you said to me the very first time you walked through my house that i was getting ready to sell and talking time. talking about a specific thing and saying I, is this who you, is this may have been who you were once upon a time, but is it still who you are? That got me to look at, you know, about three quarters of the stuff I had and say, no, that's not me anymore. I've outgrown that. Yeah. Um, Rosalind says, my grandmother used to say, if you purchase something on sale that you don't need, then you have not saved money. You've spent it. 100%. <laughs> yes. You have not saved money. You have spent it. There you go. Oh, my gosh. The, re re the rewards card things does not help either. It's true. And our taste change over the years. It's absolutely true. You can't – you're not going to be the same person that you were when you started having money and acquiring things, right? So now you're at an age where you can look at them and go, hmm. Okay, so Linda's raised her hand, Ed. Linda, would you like to – I would yes. like to make a comment or wonderful. maybe I'd like to add to this wonderful list of algorithms that you've just given us. I'm one of your older participants and looking to really downsize my stuff. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to asking, is this part of my future life? Is it something I need? If the answer is yes, my next question is, is there a possible digital alternative that could really help make this smaller? And I am a history major married to an English major. And uh -oh. when we switched to eBooks successfully, I think tons of weight was lifted off our house. So I think that's a good follow-up. Another Yes. Another one that worked for me was photos. My photos are all digital now, and it's wonderful. I, I love to look at them now. Um, 
And, oh, jigsaw puzzles. I love to do jigsaw puzzles, but it takes a lot of room. There's a little app that I do them on, on my iPad. So, you know, that's another question to ask. I, I want to keep doing this, or I need to, like digital files, like paperwork right, right. and so on. Yeah. But maybe there's a digital alternative that would help a lot. That's you know, so awesome. that is a really good point of view and it's a really good secondary question like it's already met the I want I might want this right criteria, but then you step back in and say is there a way I can do this digitally instead that's brilliant and also taking photos of keepsakes helped me say goodbye and part to many part with many of them so that might help people too and I try to take a pretty photo sort of staged of something special that was not going to make the transition to a smaller place so that's awesome and and with the photographs that's like you you create a digital version of the physical object by right. taking a photo and then out it goes that's great Good job. Yay. Thank you. And thanks for all these good ideas. I'm usually listening to the podcast, but oh. I had a chance today to join live and thank you for everything that you're doing and to all the participants who have great comments too. So yeah, wonderful. everybody always has great things to add. I'm so glad you got to come and join us live today. Thank you for coming. Thanks. That's thanks, awesome. Linda. That was a good one. Like the whole idea of you decide to keep it and then ask yourself the next question. How can I make this digital and not have to keep the physical object? That's awesome. And from several different points of view too, she really adapted that to the rest of her life. Cool, man. I like it. What else is happening out there? Eileen says not to rain on the parade, but there may be personal health consequences to doing less of our reading with ob with actual objects and more of it on screens that emit unnatural light. It's true. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can, it, even if you have to switch back and forth, even if you have to like read a regular book and then uh, do some uh, digital reading, uh, and you can also change the uh, light setting to night so that it's more of a natural light, a yellow light than a blue light, um, you, can, you can alter it that way a little bit too. Yeah, and, and you, you may have to pay attention to timing as well. Um, because to read on a, to read on a screen until late at night has more of a lingering effect on your state of wakefulness than to read a paper book like if you're mm. you know in the in the comparatively warm light of a lamp reading a paper book late at night is not doesn't carry over as much of a dis disruption to your sleep as reading from a screen, I have to be careful. I do most of my reading first thing in the morning. I, you know, I do, I always do some reading in the morning when it won't And I read at night anything. digitally, but I do it with the, the night light setting. So in the, in the night, nighttime mode or the in nighttime the, mode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so we should vary our activities using a daylight lamp helps. Yes. Audio books is relaxing. Yes. So basically, everybody is chiming in and saying there are other ways to read books than to have and keep the actual stack of books, which is awesome. And I think that that's um, for anybody who's a big reader and uh, is a lover of books, uh, surrendering a large at home library is a major mental adjustment because when you start your love of reading, part of the love is building and growing your ever expanding library <laughs> just to reflect your interest in the uh, expertise and um, enthusiasm. Um, but I think shifting that as you um, age, shifting that to something that's more manageable um, is a reasonable thing to do because when you get to our age and you've been collecting books for 40 years, that's a big library. <laughs> a lot of books and you don't uh, want to keep up with all that and certainly you don't want to pack it and move it if you have to move and downsize so it's a very logical place to downsize and um and take some of the weight out of your life and it's a good one it's an excellent one shirley <laughs> says from being in this group i ask the same questions when i'm doing online shopping and usually empty my basket Ooh, 
Ooh, good it's job. Working. It's working. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's very exciting. That's very exciting. I think that sometimes we're just trying to introduce a way for you to pause and think about it before you let go of it or before you buy it and also pause and think about the things that are already in your house to decide whether you still are attached to them and they're there because at some point you thought they were a good idea so granted you're always going to have that that's why i kept saying sure i like it but that's always your initial response i bought it because i liked it it's in the house because i liked it but we're trying to suggest that you then step past that and go on to evaluate it in, with a stricter criteria and see that it is still valuable in your life, useful to what you're doing, supporting where you want to be. And a lot of things don't get past the initial, I liked it. And so you have to go, I liked it, I like it, but and fill in the blank. Ask all your algorithm questions after that. The goal of which is hopefully um, that you're creating a space that is more manageable, that you like better, that you feel better reflects who you are, uh, makes you happy instead of angry. <laughs> I'm always amazed when people describe to me there's something in their house that makes them angry or sad like then why is it here why would you want to actively live with something that makes you sad like that seems like a no-brainer to me like, get it out of there man don't live with something that makes you unhappy and well so and that's kind of we address some of that in in the conversation about emotions mm -hmm. the, the not to say wrong reasons for keeping things but the reasons that don't serve you the reasons the reasons that don't produce the desired results and a, all sense, of that, of, a sense of obligation a sense mm -hmm. of duty a sense of guilt too, because it was too expensive or whatever yeah, yeah the money you the money you spent the the person who gave it to you what you you know what you what you owe to the person who gave it to you all um, of that fear of fear of letting go of that particular part of your life mm-hmm and all of that to say, we're trying to ask you, what would you rather your life be about? What would you rather have your space be for you? And how can you reflect that in the, the things that you decide to keep and the things that you decide to buy currently? And we want you to be happy in your space and we want you to find it to be peaceful and reflect who you are and make you feel relaxed and rejuvenated when you come home like everybody goes home because they want to go to a space that is um where they feel safe and comfortable and surrounded by the things that they love and we want that to be true for you too so if you're living with a bunch of stuff and it doesn't feel like you love your space and you're not coming home because you don't want to look at it then it's time to do some serious clean out <laughs> because that is the one place and you're the one person who benefits from all the work and it is tiring and physical work and I, and I know the bigger the job the harder the 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 harder it is to get started and the harder it is the longer it takes to get through it and you're committing to a long-term project but uh, you have to keep remembering that the person who benefits from the work is you when you are done everything that you take out every space that you rearrange to your pleasure will make you happy and that is the reason that you're suffering <laughs> that's the reason that you're doing all the work right because you're the one that ends up with the benefit and sometimes we don't make enough space we don't make that a priority because the chore looks so ugly up front like the idea is like, oh, that room, I have to, God, I have to clean up that room. Blah. And you can't get past your initial, I hate this chore response. And we want to remind you that it is for a good reason. And that good reason is for you to love your space and to be happy in it and to not feel sad, guilty, unhappy, distressed, overwhelmed. All of those things need to go away. 
when you're in your house. That's that's the space where you should feel relaxed and happy and rejuvenated. And that's why we're even talking about it. Because you're not feeling that, and we want you to feel that. There you go. Tim mentioned having blue blocker computer glasses to help with the light issue. Mm, right. I haven't I haven't seen those. I will have to look for those. I use I, I don't know if that's something you have to get you know with prescription glasses. I always I use, you know, off the off the rack. Mr. Reader man, right? Readers, yeah. So it, Tim we, also mentioned I work to take old magazines and scan them in, then recycle the paper. The software I use makes old paper magazines into searchable PDFs. Right? That's an awesome thing to do. And definitely something to do if you're retired. <laughs> oh, yeah. JC's putting up her glasses. She has little clip on reader things. <laughs> are those the, oh, those are the blue blocker things. I got it. So oh, they're okay. clip on and they look a little blue, faded, little blue uh, hazy, I see. Yeah. Cool, man. Okay, Very we'll go nice. look for those. And then uh, Rejoice says, are there any techies here today that can recommend a good hard drive or flash drive for digitizing music CDs? iCloud only stores their downloads. Oh, well, that's rude. Okay, don't know the answer to that question. We'll see if a techie person pops up. They're prescription, but not expensive. And I think they're over-the-counter ones. So, so JC must have an over-the-counter one. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I could probably use that in the evening when I'm sitting on the computer and not going to bed when I should because I'm staring at the screen answering emails. <laughs> Lori on Facebook says you can buy them online from Amazon. They do cut the glare. Of course, everything from Amazon. <laughs> Every time I think the word Amazon, I think, man, I'm just going to make Jeff Bezos richer. That's really, does he really need more of my money? Gosh, but that's a good thing to go looking for. It helps. Okay. Um, I want to take a moment to thank Linda, who is, besides contributing to today's webcast, is our latest Patreon sponsor. Thank you, Yay, Linda. Hey, Linda. Thank you so much. Y'all are super it, great to do that. We really appreciate the support. And we're going to, I should also say to our Patreon patrons, on our to-do list is to figure out some patreon exclusive benefits and there are going to be some things that are available just to just to those people as soon as we figure out what they're going to be <laughs> extra content coming your way yes right and <laughs> if there's anyone else who would like to support our efforts with a little money you can go to cfhou.com slash patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n thank you guys for doing that thanks linda we appreciate you i will also mention to anyone who's watching us uh, live or participating live, if you didn't know this already, we have a YouTube channel with, <laughs> I've lost track, about 120 <laughs> videos. And then that's at cfhou.com slash YouTube. Oops, oh, I should have see. warned you that I was going to do announcements. So right. you can put up a sign. Right, where's my sign? Okay, cfhou.com slash YouTube. There, there you go. go. Okay, what's next? Um, Ellie said, Western Digital and Seagate are good brands of external hard drives. For digitizing, digitizing CDs, try an audio program. Free ones are available. VLC is one. Ooh, um, we love it when the techie people chime in. Thank you so much. And Randy mentioned Price Revo, R-E-V-A-U-X, is a brand that makes readers, sunglasses, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. And Awesome. I'm interested in those little blue things. That's a, I like the idea of clipping them onto the glasses and. Yeah, because well, and every once in a while, I'm inclined to read in bed, and I'm still trying to do it with the iPad because that's the easiest. That's the easiest thing for me right. with my poor vision. So you need uh, blue glasses so that it doesn't Apparently. keep you awake at night, Mister. Yeah. I can't sleep well right now. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't think that's the fault of, of what I'm reading. Well, it might be the fault of what I'm reading because I'm reading The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, which is not exactly <laughs> And you're light. wondering why you can't sleep? <laughs> it is that's not exactly it. light, fluffy reading. <laughs> okay, a couple more of the usual announcements, and then I want to come back for your final thoughts on this topic. Okay. First announcement is we're going to take 
a week off next week. Gail and I are going to take the week to regroup and come up with our next set of topics. So we will not be here next week. We may have something extra to post to, to YouTube, but don't hold me to that promise. Um, we, our next webcast will be on Tuesday, October 13th at noon US Central Time. If you're watching this on YouTube, we'd love for you to join us live to get notifications about upcoming events. We invite you to join the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup. You can also follow us on Facebook by going to cfhou.com slash Facebook or join our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe. Okay, Gail, your final thoughts on this topic. All right. We started off this series with a thought-provoking quotation from the Happy Philosopher blog. So I want to return to that now and we're going to read you the quote again. All diets fail unless we change our fundamental relationship with food. All exercise regimens fail unless we change our fundamental relationship with movement and activity. Decluttering will fail too unless we change our relationship with stuff. So we've examined our relationship with stuff from a bunch of different angles with the goal of raising the level of our self-awareness where stuff is concerned. This relationship is always changing, but our hope for you is that as we share ideas and work together on decluttering projects, your spaces will evolve into an ever better reflection of who you are and the life that you want to live. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate that you stop by and chat with us and we will see you not next week, but the week after. See you on the flip side. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.